Ahoy there, YouTube. I'm back again today for another Kickstarter critique where I take a look at a different Kickstarter tabletop game project every weekday at 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Give my honest thoughts on how that project is being ran. And today, I am really excited because I don't know what an auto battle card game is. And I'm excited to check out the AI Apocalypse, the auto battle card game, epic game. That is not how you start. That is the most overused word in all of tabletop board games. It's it, come on. Some games, it's just, it's just stop it. Small box, fast pace, endless combos. Now I do love where we're going with this. Now uh, I love the fact you're telling me it's a small box. So you're kind of conveying to me, oh, that's a small box because it could have been a big box. Looking at it from this point, it could have been a big box. Now I know it's a small box, fast pace, endless combos, solo and cooperative, simultaneous gameplay, two hundred plus cards, no downtime. Holy guacamole! That's a lot of great stuff there. Honestly, once we got past Epic Game, all that stuff I think is banger information to know. It gets me more interested in your game, especially when you tell me it's a small box. So now I'm like, okay, what price are we looking at here? Honestly, I feel like if the price isn't bad, I'd slap that bad boy on the front main image. Because this guy walking into the background of something yellow, eh, whatever. Uh, what is that, one to four, and it can go up to eight? I'd make this a little bit bigger as well. It's a smidge bit hard to read. I can make it out, but I got to squint. But you got plenty of uh, unused yellow space right here. So I would do that. Other than that, 100% fun in five hours, whatever. Um, looks solid. I'm sure there'll be something else as we go through the project. Be like, ooh, that'd be a good thing to put on the main image. And now, maybe even zooming in on the box. Yeah, I, I wonder if you could. Like, you got a lot of yellow space unused around here maybe you can squeeze this over here a little bit uh because now i can see oh it's a magnetic class box it really is a small so there's gonna be essentially maybe two slots here to put the cards in or maybe the cards go side i'd like i like it i like this size box i'm excited i'm in i want to see the price as always in the video i'm thinking three things do i want it can you do it how much is it let's go and i'm excited to know what the auto battle card game is so hopefully you very clearly explain to me what the heck that is because i've played thousands of board games and that doesn't make any sense to me let's go and then you'll be able to take the unit and deploy it to the battlefield. Wait, what? Okay, wasn't expecting to start with Mark Street. Big fan of Mark Street as a personal, on a personal level. Like, I, 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 he's a very nice person. I met him in real life before. And he's got Star Trek Panic in the background. Yeah, so I like Star Trek Panic. Um, it's just interesting. Wasn't expecting to start it with, was with him, but let's go. Hey, what's going on here? Year 2095. The AI apocalypse came at full tilt. Why did we start with Mark Street? What just happened? And then you'll be able to take the unit and deploy it to the battlefield. Wait, what? So, hey, what? he's in the middle of shooting a video and he's set What's on, on fire. And now we're talking about the game. Year 2095. Okay. <laughs> the AI Weird. came at full tilt. Within hours, chaos and mass destruction spread across the solar system. Theme, art. Civilized areas turned into battlefields where factions fight for the last remaining artifacts of the collapsed high-tech society. Come on. But amidst the chaos, a glimmer of hope. You, a fearless faction leader, navigating the treacherous combat zones, cool. assembling your hey, there we go. and striving for survival. Why do we go so fast? I want to see those cards. I want to see how much information and text is on the cards. Okay, okay. Lieutenant Dan. <laughs> and striving Swiss Army survival. Woman. Very descriptive Stepping name. Of AI apocalypse. A That's a good shot. That gives me the, the uh, an idea of just how small that box is. Which, once again, I imagine we should be pounding our chest a little bit more about the price. I'm assuming your price is going to be rock solid. Fast paced card game where every decision matters. Now, you said fast paced. Uh, you said fast paced twice now. Oh, but you did have. You actually had the time link. Never mind. You had it on the main image. Boop. Take control of Ooh. one of 30 different factions. Recruit. Whoa, go back asymmetrical factions so it looks like they got some of them have like one time per use special abilities some of them have persistent special abilities this is great this is nice i'm excited now okay let's go fallout boys different <laughs> i like some of the references i'm seeing here factions recruit your twilight zone units be careful with that one build synergies and engage them in automated battle this looks fun but first Open slots and then play units that improve upon oh, each other. What? Get into the flow of exploring endless combos and strategies as you navigate the volatile landscape of the combat zone. Draw your battle card. I don't know exactly what happened there, but as a gamer, I want to know more. I want to know more about how that works. So they're going to be getting more and more powerful 
uh, presumably before they go away or something. I, I don't know. Also, I think when they say auto battle card game, I think they just mean deterministic combat. I think that's it, where it's like there's no dice rolling. There's it's just it's whatever happens happens. Maybe um, I'm not sure. Cards to establish the attacking unit and determine its strength. Play left over. Wait, wait, what just happened there? Okay, so if, if we got the cards here. We got our Hulk arm. Establish the attacking unit. Man, you gotta be careful. Some of these words are using here. I'm just, I'm worried. I'm worried about like uh, cease and desist and stuff. We got a lot of names. We're like, ah. and maybe I, and that could just be that I don't know enough about what to use and what not to use. I'm more of an err on the side of caution kind of guy. Well, at least with this, not with most things. And determine its strength. Play leftover cards from your hand to strategize your moves or push your unit strength with collected ammunition. I don't know what's going on, but twist, I like it. Defeat holds opportunity. Losing health early in the game gives you an advantage. Harness the power of 64 unique special units. Excellent. Merge cards to unlock their potential and dominate the combat zone with more powerful combos. I don't know what's going on, but I want it. I want to play it. I want to try it. And I hope there's a good rule booklet. I'm concerned about this rule booklet. In the end, victory belongs to the player who's the only one with health cards left. Show me the rule booklet? Okay. Not enough? Go pro with the expansion, play solo against the Automa, oh. or immerse yourself into the campaign. Whoa! Into the story. A man. The choice is yours. Man. Play the game 50 times, and you won't have seen all cards, or combos, or states of the game, all game ends, and all tactical gimmicks. All of that just with cards. In a box that easily fits your gear wherever you go. Tell me why I want it. Okay. I thought that was a really solid video. Do I want it? Yes, I do. I want the expansion too, Gagnabbit. I want to play campaign. I want to play solo. Cool. So you already told me about the pledge level. I want how much is it? We haven't talked about the price yet, which I still think a little bit of a misstep here because I imagine it's going to be a good price, but I know the exact pledge I want. I want the base box. I want the expansion. And maybe, maybe, just maybe, if there's a third pledge level where I have to get another base game in order to play this up to eight players, I'll consider it. I'll consider it. But you've already put all these thoughts in my head. You've already put all these thoughts in my head by how you did your main image and how you did your video, and that's good. I already know what I'm going to buy. Potentially. Uh, first grade 13 back. Hello, everybody. We are Miriam and Philip, fathers, cyclists, climbers, board game enthusiasts, and best friends from Berlin. Marion draws cars for a living as a car designer. Does so, we just have to think. We got stuff to think. Uh, cool. We got three collaborators here. Looks good, so we should have some good customer service. First time project, so you are against the first timer's gun. You know, you got to convince me that you can do it, which means you just you just can't have it look like a total crap show, which so far, so good. After the AI apocalypse, you're left to fend for yourself. Fast paced, tons of combos, update players, epics, gameplay, small box, zero downtime, 200 cards, high quality components, solely competitive. Wow. You know, <laughs> I talked about maybe what you might consider putting on your main image. I don't know if you could fit all that on there. But that, that's, a, that's a really good start. I love having that there. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Back to the top. And a magnetic box, which once again, you conveyed to me in the main image once I clicked on it. Not quite on the outside. Um, Apocalypse brings auto battlers to the next level. Fight against, and I think this is like a board game, a video game thing too. I just don't think I ever got into one. I really fell in love with this game. Whatever. Terrible quote. Who cares? Like, oh, random Australian person. Austrian person. Fell in love with game. That's the quote. That's your quote? That's the quote we're leading off with. Random person loved the game. Why? Why did they love the game? What about the, do they love the game? Did they play it solo? Did they play it four players? Did they play an epic eight-player game? Did they play it head-to-head -head 20 times? There's so much more information that could be conveyed here that's not, so it just looks like a superfluous, useless quote, and definitely not one I would lead off with. Uh, inspired by Hearthstone, Battlegrounds, and Super Auto Pets. Okay. Thank you. I love when you start throwing out the names of other games. I don't know. Uh, I know Hearthstone. I loved Hearthstone. I was addicted to Hearthstone for a hot minute, probably like a couple months. So I'm immediately more intrigued by this game. That's the power of using other people's names. Some people say don't do it. I disagree strongly. I think it's mega that all the cards have multi-use. Okay. It's mega? Is that is that is that a new expression? I guess I'm... Man, I'm just not... I'm not hip with the kids today. I didn't know it's mega. I'm going to use that. What would you think of the movie? It's mega. And I'm not making fun of it. It's just I'm, I'm learning slang. I'm learning slang here so I can sound cool. I like the decision making going on in the game because there are lots of ways to put units together. Thank you, Mark. Mark with a good quote. 
Uh, first one I've seen. If you want something more adult than Challengers, you should have a look at this. What's Challengers? <laughs> okay, I feel like you're referencing another game, but I don't know what this game is. Challengers game. What is Challengers? Is this Challengers? This is not chicken. It's not Challengers. Ooh, that one's made by Hero Time Manufacturing. Uh, is this it? Is this the game you're talking about? I don't think I don't assume this dinosaur golf game. Wow, rank one thousand. Hot diggity dogs, Z man. When did this game? Twenty twenty two. Man, somebody just gotta watch it play. I want to know more about that. Challengers. Uh, but your quote is it doesn't tell me anything. So useless. Uh, I, is this the challengers we're talking about? Maybe put a picture of what challengers is next to this quote. I guess I don't know. Uh, the engine you build up is really rewarding and leads to great combos turns. This is a lot of fun. Okay. Building up an engine. Really great combos. That's what I love to hear. Not, it's better than Challengers. A thing I don't know. And I, I'm not even sure. Like, I'm Googling it. I'm trying to figure out what Challengers is. Is that Challengers? Is it something else? Is it a video game? Is this Challengers? No, this is Meeple Mountain. I don't know. You didn't tell me. Uh, the, uh, the tripling mechanic is great. I love it. But I also love uh, how, as you lose, you get stronger. Okay, fine. I don't know what a tripling mechanic is, but I'm excited now. We love challengers. I have both so far. What is challengers? Is that a game? Is that what he's talking about? He's talking about this game? Because that game looks fun. You see, I see Rodney. I'm in. Uh, this is our top card game in our house. Okay. It's fine. It's better than just We Love It. Actually, is it better than We Love It? Yeah, I think it's better than We Love It. Either way, it's superfluous fluff. Auto battlers are a new game-changing genre of the video game industry. Ha ha. Now we're telling me what auto battlers are. Awesome. Uh, all players recruit simultaneously in battle automatically, which reduces the playtime by a mile. That's the kind of thing I'd mention in the video, honestly. You spent like the first 30 seconds going over just the theme. Like, oh yeah, AI took over, we gotta fight him. Boom. There we go. We're done. You don't need 30 seconds to go over that. Short playtime paired with high replayability. Seal the loop of just one more round. Now, this is a great quote. It's not even a quote, it's just you telling me about your game, which is awesome. Yeah, Challengers is an auto battler card game. There's Challengers 2 as well. Is it oh, it's this one? Cool. Chal or is that that's challengers beach cup i think it is i don't know <laughs> either way i would put a picture next to challengers at least just like boom hey there's the thing i'm talking about uh so cool i take it back on that quote because apparently i'm just an old fogley who doesn't know what challengers are and i apocalypse you take control of one of the 30 factions yep cool look good i just want the price what you get 27 convert the curtsy 29 bucks yep that's where we go i don't like your main image anymore don't like it you have omitted an incredibly valuable marketing tool to you, which is this is a $29 game. Also, by telling me it's a $29 game, I no longer am like, maybe this is a big box, maybe this is a small box. I now know it's a small box, period, because obviously you're not giving me that massive box for $29. Uh, and that's a great price. That's a really great price. That's such a low price that it's just like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll risk it. I'll throw some money at you. Why not? Uh, they changed the name uh, to Beach Something. Ah, okay. Cool. Yeah, thousand number of thousand game all the time. Heck, take the dog. But once again, you're referencing a game that just came out in 2022. And there's a lot of games that have came out in 2022. So it's just, I put at least a picture next to it, potentially. 201 cards printed on 300 GSM linen finish for all cards. Okay. It's fine. Uh, it's fine. It's not, it's not like high quality. Like the 300 GSM, at least. It's like, it's fine. Like our standard's 350, like in Hero Time, like you, you just go to it, we just go 350, so it's, it's a bit, it's not, it's fine. They're fine cards. 201 cards printed on uh, 102 basic units, battle slots, 64 unique special units, they look cool. Love to see it zoomed in a little bit more, but unnecessary. I still like this. Um, 30 unique factions, ammunition, you're not really up against the gun here. You're giving me a 200 plus card, interesting looking game. Price seems fine. The cardboard sturdy insert, corrugated cardboard corrugated cardboard three slots looks nice four player aids one autonoma aid car so then the all gameplay expansion plus wow and it's only a what is that eleven dollar jump nine dollar jump so just a no-brainer obviously i'm gonna get this one yeah good 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 and then i bet you there's gonna be a third one here and because because you had me like right now i don't feel like anyone's gonna be like nope I'm done. I don't want the expansion. I'm not playing that extra $9. Whatever your next one is, if it's reasonable, you're going to get the people. So I'm going to predict that the next pledge level, which I don't even know it exists, I don't even know what's going to be in it, is probably going to be the most popular one. It's a bold proclamation. 
There it is. Five to eight players all in pledged. I did. I kind. I kind of. I kind of thought that might be it, and I did reference that a little bit earlier. But I think this is going to be the most popular. One. Fifty-nine bucks, sixty bucks MSRP. Now I'm really excited to check this out, though, because this is really going to put Bowers Law to the test. Because I pound my chest about how much I think you should always spotlight five or more players. But let's see if people are buying the five or more players. I am super excited to check out this pledge area. Let's go. Forty-four, eighteen. Obviously, nobody wants this because we're all getting this. Five hundred four, and then. 105. Okay. I should pound my chest a little less hard about that, apparently. All right. Good to know. Good to know. But the solo. So, solo. For sure. Pound your chest about the solo. Once you get to five days, just just a slight, just a, just a tap it. Just tap the chest, all right? Because that's still 105. It's still a huge chunk. It's still five times more than that one. But this one, five to one. Okay. Looks good. All right uh dice tower preview once again that was weird i see and that's like that's what i'm talking about like the beginning of it i know why you had mark street there i think to provide you with credibility like drift from the jump like oh hey i know this guy but at the same time it doesn't make any sense like it's just weird like oh hey there's mark street for four seconds and then his screen catches on fire and then it's talking about the game and we don't ever reference mark street again and you're like oh okay weird uh is this for you a quick so we got overviews previews don't care where's the video where's the gameplay don't care don't care different languages great preview don't care preview don't care where is the gameplay straight oh no gameplay or is it down here why is there no gameplay video ugh uh yeah and maybe it's just because there's another section that's gameplay videos but yeah once you get more than one preview i don't really feel like they're that much worth it but unless you got different languages different languages changes that equation completely uh obviously it's not like you're like ah you shouldn't have two previews one's german that's that's like having one and yeah great okay but where's the gameplay i need that especially for what is supposed to be a, a light simple game well not a light simple game but a uh, quicker game linen finish uh i put this higher i always say this say it I'll say it and i'm never gonna stop saying it what's your goal when you launch a kickstarter it is to get your kickstarter funded What's your goal? What's your Kickstarter funded? It's to hit these delicious stretch goals and make your game better because by making your game better with these stretch goals, your game is going to be higher rated on Board Game Geek. You're going to have more likelihood that people are going to like your game. You're going to have, you know, and yes, that can blow up in your face if you do stupid stretch goals. But for the most part, stretch goals need to be higher. They're exciting and they add value to your game. New artifacts, the luxury insert, even though I will say they did a great job in their pledge area of doing the unlock symbol so i not only knew there was going to be a stretch goal area but we started to hit stuff which is exciting but i think i think it slapped me in the face with this sort of thing artifacts divider box embossing new artifact wow we got micro stretch goals up the yay yo okay two new artifacts new special unit put that higher yeah totally put that higher uh and none of them are bangers but they're all they're all good except for the uh, the insert the insert was a banger uh, we're to treat the campaign as pure as possible. Everybody should have the chance to get the best experience of the game. That's why most of our stretch goals are cosmetic nature because we already... Wait, wait, they're not cosmetic. What are you talking about? They're not, they're not cosmetic in nature. They're new cards. What? That's why most of our stretch goals are of cosmetic nature because we already packed every content we managed to the game did not want to cut something out of the sake of the more stretch goals. So it's weird when you say that, but then you don't actually follow through on it because let's let's just do this. So let it finish. Okay. That's for everybody. But uh, new artifact expansion, new card, new card, uh, new card, new card. So it's about 50 50? Five? Yeah, no, there's it's more. It's probably like 60 40 there. So it's weird that you're like, uh, it's whatever. No early bird, no free gift, no Kickstarter exclusives, no fake funding goal, no preempt. Yeah, we get it. Cool. Pound your chest some more about. Okay. Uh, cringe uh i just it's just i hate when people do this especially considering you are like you have it's so weird i honestly yeah i would just get rid of that paragraph potentially let me know what you think about that because it doesn't feel yeah you don't feel like you're actually practicing what you preach there <laughs> eric adjusted play cool there is fantastic gameplay videos awesome awesome so yeah they just put the previews up higher great but we do have the gameplay videos hopefully there's a solo solo mode playthrough chef's kiss fantastic Oh, never mind. Not in English. Still good, but majority of people are probably going to be from the United States of America because, yep. Oh, never mind. Germany coming in big. Good for you, Germany. Dang. Okay. Third of a point grade bump up. 
I do this pretty much any time I see your country bigger than the United States of America, I, I give you a third of a point grade pop-up. Now, that is also a negative because that also means you're not marketing very well to the United States of America, which makes me wonder if it's going to be the shipping further on down. How bad is the shipping? Or maybe, man, I feel like we need to spotlight that price. Your price is so dang good. 29 bucks. Now, granted, I'm not going to pay 29 bucks. I'm paying 38 bucks. But even then, that's still a great price. You need to get me in the door a little bit quicker, I think, with that 29 bucks. Uh, but good. Good for them. Marketing to their people. And this is one of those times where they have a very high number of new backers. I'm not going to second guess it like I've second guessed with other ones because it makes sense because most of this is from Germany. So good for them. Whatever they're doing locally, keep it up. Great job. And maybe it's a, it's probably these content creators too. Like that's great to know. Awesome. Go Germany. Big ups. France still number one, obviously, in my heart. But Germany, solid number two or three. We really got our heads smoking to come up with a clean and engaging solo thing. Stuff cool. Love it. Solo's great. You already got a video. I'm good. Uh, why back is on Kickstarter? If this campaign does not succeed, the game won't be sure. Being the first to play of the game, we're offering exclusive discounted prices. Yeah, you can help us create the best product. Cool. The package that you get here is excellent. Once again, this Austrian board gamer with two quotes, and neither of them are like, great. <laughs> How do you know, challengers, it was nominated for the Spiel is Yours? Ooh, because I'm a noob. Because I'm a noob. Actually... I'm a stay-at-home dad currently. I have a one-year-old daughter. So, like, the last few years have been uh, extra me not paying attention to, like, <laughs> a lot of stuff. Shipping. Shipping will charge of the pledge major after the campaign ends. You'll be sent a survey. As and now I want to try it, though. I'm like, I love dinosaurs. So, oh. Um, unit, oh, there it is. There it is. Yep. Terrible shipping. And that's, that explains so much. That explains so much, because it looks like you got everything, all the ducks in a row, but you got to find better shipping for this. And I'm sure it's possible. There's no way that this should cost $20 to ship this small of a package. Uh, I mean, yeah. Just a hard stop, because there's tons of other people who are making Kickstarter projects outside the United States of America who are not having these terrible prices, because they are. They're really bad. And, and I imagine that's why, part of the reason why. So once again, and I even, I speculated, I speculated as soon as I saw it. So it was like, oh, United States is not getting beat by Germany, and this has a great price, and this looks like a really cool, engaging, fun game. It's got to be the shipping. And there it is. Yep, that's a bummer. Third point grade bump down, because there's a better way to do it. I don't know what it is. That's not my job. I don't, I don't have to ship out games to the United States of America from Germany, but I'm sure there's a better way, because I've seen other people do it. And, and yet maybe it's working with someone firsthand in America. Maybe it's reaching out to, yeah, like that's just bad. That sucks. That sucks. All right. Retailers, welcome. Who are we? We're people. We did stuff. Great. Uh, yeah. Ooh, AI generated art. Showing of the game and through ads. We got a ton of compliments for the artwork of the game. People do look, but it's great. We're really happy that in the case, though we immediately replied to the people that we, uh, use the help of AI to create those pictures to be a bit more clear about it. Uh, so yeah. AI art. Oh no. This is where you got to pretend like you care. Um, which some people do. Some people do. Ooh, ugly. 17. Uh, so this is not fun. I would organize this like reload from Colossal Games because if my question is question number 16, then I have to go to question number 16 instead of just organizing it. Will there be a tabletop? Uh, if we. No, probably not. Due to ripoffs of the other games being sold, they've been released on tabletop. We do not go that route. Sorry. Whatever. Uh, our taxes event included. Will the game be available in retail? How can I choose if I have the English? Uh, how do I get? Okay, fine. Updates. Zero comments. Zero comments. Zero comments. Jiminy Christmas. Wow. I'm going to guess you have a Discord server and you need to get everyone off your Discord server. I've said this time and time and time again. If you have a Discord server and I'm not a Discord person, you need to go to that Discord server and say the Kickstarter is launching tomorrow. We want to go radio silent on the Discord because we want all the engagement, all the chat, all the excitement, all the passion in the Kickstarter comments and update section because that's what Kickstarter wants us to do. They want us to create a, an engaging project. So this is terrible. These are absolutely terrible, god-awful updates. I haven't even clicked on one. I don't even know what they say. But the bottom line is if you've had one person comment on nine updates, that's your slap in the face to say, wow, maybe we should reconsider how we're doing these because they're not working. They're not getting people engaged, which is... The point, obviously, the, the main point is to update people, which I'm sure you've probably done a great job of it. But 
you also need to be trying to get people engaged. And that's just not happening. So are you just vomiting information on me? Yeah, it looks like it. Ask a question. That's it. There's no magic. It's not like it's hard. It's not difficult. Ask a question. And preferably, ask a question in here. I challenge you. Update 10. Ask a question in there. And I guarantee you, you'll probably get more than one comment. Uh, so yeah, I'll click on the most, I guess the most popular one, which has 13 hearts. So we'll go by hearts, which normally go by engage, but we'll go by hearts. Fourth stretch goal unlocked in solo mode. Oh, is this the one where you already had them pre-planned and you're just dropping them? You're pulling a seam on? Yep. Due to high demand. Oh, okay. So you didn't have a solo gameplay. That's one of those things you should know going into it that you got to have. Uh, you know people are going to want that. In theory. If you did your research, you should uh comments stretch goal number 10 unlocked cool but thank you all so much for the support no problem it's no coincidence we'll be back you run a good campaign well it seems like a good end product especially from a first time creator uh thank you for your kind words Ooh, i want to know what they said the funding is good to make the game happening in good quality though we're still in a small numbers and have to look carefully what we're capable of doing like i said the 300 gsm i don't know if i'd be pounding my chest about that i don't know if i'd even mention that i just say oh we got 201 cards because it's not like your cards are nice like it's it, they're fine they're fine cards um so maybe don't spotlight it like we said earlier, we want to finish the game on early in German, the best quality. Tell you what can and it's possible to scope this campaign if there's a French version. Yeah, that's you stretch yourself thin. Cool. I just noticed I have just seen the preview video of the board game Panthers. He noticed that the numbers on the slot page are a bit hard to read. Are you considered that? We know about this. We'll make it better readable. Cool. So they're in here. They're collaborating. Looks like good customer service, which you want to see, especially if you're a first time designer. If they're having bad customer service as a first time designer. That's a giant red flag. I'm in. I mean, do I want it? Yes, I do. Um, can you do it? Y yeah, it's fine. You got $28,000 and you're making two small boxes. Like, let's let's really boil it down here. This is not a difficult game to make. Like, I could pull up this quote. I could literally go get on my Hero Time website and I could pull up this quote in like less than five minutes. Magnetic box, something cards. Yeah, it's, it's really simple. Uh, and then we have... That's the exact same box? Yeah, yeah. Cool. And, and here's the other thing you got to look at it. What's their print run? What are they doing? So they got uh, 505. And then 105. So that's 210. So what we're probably going to do about 1,000 print run minimum right there. We love the creators. Cool. Cool. And then they also have a 500 of the expansion as well. Great. Good for them. So yeah, I have no issues. Uh, yeah. Can you do it? Yep. I'll give it an asterisk. They're not making much. They're not overstanding the stuff. They're not doing stupid pins. They're not, you know, like, oh, we got a shirt or a hoodie or some crap like that. Um, so, yeah, very easy. So, and then, then the, how much is it? That's the biggest damning thing here. That shipping is terrible. It's a terrible shipping price. It's got awful. It's, it's, what, it's what other parts of the world expect, right? And I hate to say that. I'm looking like the American here, which I am. It's what other parts of the world expect. They're used to this kind of god-awful shipping service. And the United States is not. And so when we see it, it's like, it's just like, well, really? Are you treating us like the rest of the world? Um, and that's, you know, that's really uh, deflating your balloon. So I would, I mean, there's got to be a way, a better way to do it. Because you're, I mean, because here's the other thing. You're shipping over, what, how many games are you shipping over? 164? So what, like 200 games? Yeah, there's, yeah. Because the bottom line is, I mean, you could fit those things into flat rate usps like shipping envelopes those would be just fine and it's yeah the price is just really oof, it's rough it's rough too bad that sucks um so final grade for this one is a solid grade b minus i think that shipping obviously it's gonna sink you i think this thing could easily be double probably if, if the shipping wasn't so bad which sucks because, yeah, there's a reason the majority of the time it's going to be the United States of America dominating. And this time, we're, we're getting dominated. And that means you're missing out on a huge chunk of the pie, all because you couldn't figure out the shipping, uh, I would imagine. Just because when you get there, you're like, oh, yeah, it's a $29 game. Oh, but it's not anymore. Now it's a $54 game. That sucks. Hopefully, second print run, they figure that out. But AI Apocalypse, I'm going to go with a B minus. Let me know in the comments below what's your final grade for AI Apocalypse, the auto battle card game. If you're enjoying the content, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below. Bye bye.